Welcome to the God First broadcast. I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. Thank you for joining us. The message that we're about to deliver today is the first message of 2017, a message entitled Honoring God. For 2017, our desire is that you would join us in our attempt to honor the God of the Bible in everything that we do. I'll join you at the conclusion of this message. We can't go back. Uh, into the prior years. The call to honor the God of the Bible is not to imply nor to suggest that we haven't honored him in times past. Nor does it imply nor suggest that honoring him hasn't been a priority in the lives of many, if not most, Believers. However, upper room and those who are streaming and visitors, this is a call to step up. This is a call from the God of the Bible to increase. It is a call to resist the growing the growing trends to dishonor him. It is a call to resist and downright refuse the temptation to secularize the house of God. Amen. It is a call to refuse to join in the trivializing or the trivialization of God that's taking place in society. Today we trivialize worship, we trivialize praise, we trivialize uh, our sacred institutions. You find many times today preachers preaching against the church now more than they preach against sin. And the things that we once held true and held dear, we, even the body of Christ, treat them as trivial. But there are those who are going to resist that temptation. Our theme tonight is a call. It is a source of motivation for all believers to perform each task to the best of his ability or her ability. Because we are not doing it unto men but we are doing the work unto the God of the Bible. For the God of the Bible, who we serve, we must say to ourselves, we will do our best. The God that I serve, I will do my best. I want to, in 2017, Give God my best. I know that we would rather hear a message about what God is going to give us. But to get what God has for you, you got to give God what he's calling for. Amen. And he's calling for our best. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 says something about this and also verse 23 through 24. Colossians 3 and 17 says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all or do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by him. Verse 23 says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartedly, that is, do it with devotion. Do it honestly. 
as unto the Lord. If you sing, sing with your heart in it. If you preach, preach with your heart in it. If you usher, usher with your heart in it. Whatever we do, do it heartedly as unto the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. If you look at Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 6 through 8 speaks to this same subject. It says, not with eye service. Eye service is merely outward devotion. Is serving so people can see you serving. God says, not with eye service as men pleasers. And see, men pleasers are not people who serve, who try to please the pastor. A men pleaser, men pleasers, is not someone who serves to try to live up to the expectation of the person who is over them. That is not the definition of of a men, of men pleasers. Yeah. You're not committing the sin of men pleasers when you do a job up to the level of, the, of your boss or of your, of your leader. That's not men pleasers. Men pleaser, by definition, is an individual who tries to please everybody. And you can't please everybody. I said the other day, Every day, somebody is upset with me. Praise the Lord. I, I either didn't visit when they thought I should, or I said something that they thought I shouldn't have, or I didn't say what they thought I should say. I couldn't be what they thought I should be. Someone always is upset. And you know what you can do about that? Nothing. Because it is impossible to please everybody. And I'll tell you, you're dead in the water. If you try to please everybody, you have to please the Lord. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With goodwill, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be born, whether he's a slave or a freeman, if he does right, the Lord will bless him. To honor God is a call tonight. For us to see God as the God of the Bible sees himself. How does the Lord see himself? Malachi 1 and verse 14 uh, says, God speaks this of himself. He said, I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, we've got to see the God of the Bible for being a great God. The devil is trying to minimize the Lord in our eyes. Amen. And we look at him and we don't see him uh, as we have in times past. But I'm telling you, the God of the Bible is great. He's a mighty God and he's greatly to be praised. As a matter of fact, Psalms 48 and verse 1 says, God is great and greatly to be praised. Greatly to be, to be praised literally means, to, it means that we should vehemently praise him. That we should speedily praise him. And one writer said that we should praise him louder and louder. He is great and greatly to be praised. There is a certain response. There is a certain respect that is to be shown and demonstrated in the presence of true greatness and true holiness. There is a certain response. That is appropriate for us to give the God of the Bible. God said to Moses, put off the shoes from thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Exodus 3 and 5. When Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, 
gave the wrong response to the angel Gabriel who stands in the presence of the Lord. Gabriel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. Gabriel was insulted when John, when he gave John a word from the Lord and when he gave Zechariah a word from the Lord and Zechariah asked Gabriel for a sign. Gabriel said, a sign, a sign, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of the Lord. So since you want a sign, here is your sign. You won't speak another word until the child is born. Wrong response. See, some of us give God the wrong response. Oh my, we get angry, we get upset. But when the Lord gives you something, you, he, listen, he pays attention to how we respond. The Lord said to Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thine house. If that little short man would have taken all day to get out, of that, get out of that tree, he would have missed his blessing. But he got in a hurry and came down and he ended up getting a blessing. There is a certain, or should I say, a proper response that should be given to the God of the Bible. Now allow me to say this. Honoring God, upper room, and visitors and those who are streaming, honoring God benefits us, not him. I want to say that again. Honoring God, the theme that he's given us for 2017 is not for his benefit. It is for ours. Now the God of the Bible is not a suffering for a lack of praise. Amen. In heaven, the four beasts over and over and over praise the Lord that sits on the throne. Take their golden crowns and throw, him, throw them at his feet. Collect the crowns and put them back on their heads and then throw them at his feet. And they keep praising him over and over and over. The God of the Bible is praised all the time. So he's not suffering for a lack of praise. Even Jesus said to, to the people, now, if you hold your praise, the rocks will cry out. Because let me, let me minif, minimize us because I don't want us to think tonight that the Lord needs our praise. I want you to know that the Lord doesn't need our praise. I don't want you to think that God needs your honor or that God needs my honor. The Lord needs nothing from us. Praise the Lord. But the praise of God, the honoring of God benefits us. We do not make him uh, more God. When we praise him, we do not make him bigger when we praise him. We do not make him better when we praise him. You know, there's a lot of bad theology out there. I heard one of the famous word of faith preachers say, let's make God bigger tonight. And he says, let's uh, magnify the Lord. Now David says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And to magnify means to make large. So let's make God bigger. That's that's bad theology. We can't make God anything. Uh, the truth is, he made us. The Bible says we are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. It is he who have made us and not we ourselves. No one whom you made can make you bigger. Praise the Lord. God made us. Praise the Lord. When we praise him tonight, we do not make him more godlike. But there is uh, something that happens to us when we honor the Lord. But let me show you how, uh, let me show you something that I want you to study when you get home. In the book of Job, chapter 35, you find the words of one of the wisest men who ever lived. The young man, Elihu, who sat silently as Job's three friends tried to explain to him the origin of his troubles. All of Job's friends were partly right, but they missed the greater point. The youngest observer is the one who got it right. Uh, Elihu, uh, Job 31 and verse 1, Elihu spake moreover and said, 
thinkest thou, look at this, thinkest thou this to be right, that thou, uh, that thou saidest, reading the King James Version, my righteousness is more than God. He said, do you think that this is right? That you have said, Job, that you are more righteous than God. Thank God that the Lord tolerates our vain talk when we're hurting. Because, you know, sometimes when you're hurting, you say things that you ought not to say. Job was hurting when he says, he lashed out, I'm more righteous than God. His point was that the Lord has allowed things to happen to me that I don't deserve. And I've been righteous and the Lord in losing my family, in losing my children, in losing my wealth, and in losing my health, what God has allowed to happen to me, I did not deserve. And so his argument was that he was more righteous than God. Elihu says, for thou hast said, what advantage will it be? unto thee that is what advantage is it to you God and and what profit shall I have if I cleanse uh, from my sin he says what profit is there in me if I live holy why should I live right Lord you haven't treated me right you let things happen to me and uh, so Elihu says to Job uh, look unto the heavens and see and behold the clouds. What is, what is Eli, Elihu uh, headed toward? What is he talking about? He's dealing with the transcendence of God. He, he's, he wants to bring Job up to speed and show Job that God sets so high and that the Lord is so far above everything. The God of the Bible is so far above us that he transcends everything that go on down here on this earth. He says... If thou sinnest, what dost thou against him? If you sin, do you think you're going to hurt him? If you get mad and backslide, do you think? You know, because I've heard preachers say, we've broken God's heart. Do you think that that's going to hurt him? If I quit tonight and I declare that the God of the Bible is not God, does that change the fact that he is God? I decide tonight that I'm not going to serve him. Does that change the fact that he is who he is? He said, if you sin, do you think you've done anything against him? And if thou transgress, uh, if thy transgressions be multiplied, what do doest thou to him? The answer is nothing. Well, I'm not going to go to church anymore. What do you think that's going to do to God? I'm not going to praise him tonight. I'm going, I refuse to lift my hand. He's still God. He doesn't need my little hands. And he don't need your little hands. Don't need my money. And he doesn't need your money. God doesn't need my voice. My God, and he doesn't need yours. One famous group said in one of their songs that the Lord looked at them and he saw something that he can use. That's not true. Praise the Lord. There's nothing in us that God can use except what God has deposited in us in the first place. David, the, Solomon declared when he prayed, all things come from thee, O Lord, and, and of thine own have we given unto thee. And look at what he says to uh, uh, Job. He says, if thou be righteous, now this is for the holy folk, if thou be righteous, what has thou given him? Somebody shout, nothing. nothing. Isn't that something? I'm, I'm living holy. I'm walking up right. I know the Lord. I know the Lord is proud of me. If you are righteous, you still haven't given him anything. Because he's God. I'm telling you, he needs nothing from us. Praise the Lord. Isn't that kind of humbling? Since some of us have come thinking, well, I know the Lord needs me. No, he doesn't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Church mother, bishop, presiding bishop, pastor of the church, praise the Lord, elders, all of us. God doesn't need us. Oh, no, oh, no. And if we decide to quit tonight, his program will still go over. He'll raise someone else up. 
I often say that the mighty founder of the upper room is in heaven. The founder died and the church grew. If the church can grow with the founder being in heaven, what about us? If the work of God con continued in the earth with Moses being dead, Elijah being dead, David is dead, Paul is dead, Peter is dead, John is dead. My God, if with all of the grace dead and the work of God is still going on, isn't that a humbling thing? We all should realize that God doesn't need any of us. We need him. Somebody shout something to him. He says, if thou be righteous, what hast thou given him? Or what has he received? Or what received he of thine hand? Uh, nothing. Then it says, thy wickedness. Your wickedness may hurt a man as thou art. Now, our misbehavior can affect people. Being mean as the devil can break somebody else's heart. Being wicked can hurt your neighbor. Your wickedness can affect a man as thou art. And thy righteousness may profit the son of man. That is, your righteousness may help people, but the God of the Bible is transcendent. He's a big God. He's a mighty God. And tonight, praise the Lord, Praise the Lord, you may as well catch the vision of this big, magnificent God. God doesn't need any church. God doesn't need the church of God in Christ. God doesn't need the Baptist church. God doesn't need, hallelujah, the holiness church. As a matter of fact, he's so powerful that he's self-sufficient. He said uh, concerning the harvest, he says, pray ye therefore to the God of the harvest that he may send forth laborers to work in his harvest. So he is the God of laborers. He knows how to send laborers to work in his harvest. I'm pleased, I'm grateful to be one of God's laborers. And how many tonight can say, I don't want anybody to take my place or to give God the praise that I'm to give him. I want to give him my praise. I want to do my work because he doesn't need me, but he's privileged me to be here. If you understand tonight that you're privileged, give God a praise in this place. Somebody shout tonight, he's a mighty God. Proverbs 8 and 36 says, uh, but he that sinneth uh, against me, God says, wrongeth his own soul. And all they that hate me love death. God says, now you can sin against me, but you won't hurt me. You are wrong your own soul. This is what we need to tell our children. And this is what we need to tell each other. That when you turn your back on the Lord, you hurt yourself. Praise God. I'll show God. I'll show him. I'm not going to serve him anymore. You're hurting yourself. He is the Lord. He's a mighty God. Amen. And if we hate the Lord. I hate God because God didn't do what I wanted him to do. The Bible says when you hate the Lord, then you love death. Praise the Lord. So anybody that's holding a grudge against God, you got to get over that. Right fast because you, you, you're loving your enemy. The Bible teaches that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So you don't want to love death. You want to love God. Job 22, 2 through 3 says, Can a man be profitable unto God as he that is wise is profitable unto himself? The answer is no. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous or is it gain to him that thou makest thy, thy way perfect? The truth is, in the truest sense, there is nothing that we can do to bring gain to God. He needs nothing from us. He's not dying as a result of not getting enough praise. He is God. And there's no one like him. He loves us. And he wants to do something special for us. Now, he put his 
institution in the world. He put his program in the world. And the program of God is not for God. The program of God is for man. The worship system that God set up is not for God. The worship system that God set up is for us. How do I know that it's not for God? Well, the Lord has always been God. He is the beginning. Before he made time, he was God. Before he made a universe, he was God. Before he made people to worship him, he was God. I don't know at what point in eternity God decided, I think I'll make time. See, because time, praise the Lord, uh, has not always existed. Praise the Lord. Time is limited. How do I know that time is limited? Because time is winding up. Limited things run out. Eternal things never run out. The God of the Bible is eternal. So way before he decided to create time and create a universe and in the universe create the earth and then uh, uh, make man in his own image, he was still God. And, and he had no need for us. Praise the Lord. And then he made us and put us here. And thank you for that, Lord. And then put a system in the world so as to protect us from ourselves. And uh, fixed it where that would be a system where man could get his favor and get his power and get his anointing. And then after he put the system together, uh, there was a priest by the name of Eli. Eli, the priest, had uh, two sons. Uh, his sons, uh, they were, they, the Bible says something bad about his sons. So they were the sons of Belial. Listen to me, parents. Listen, parents. You, we can't get our parenting style from uh, Oprah. Well, that's the conclusion of the message for today. Happy New Year to you and 2017. This is going to be some great, great year. But I want you to purpose in your heart. Work on it. I'm doing it. You're doing it. We're going to do it here at the Upper Room, at your church and everywhere else. We're going to bring glory to our awesome God and we're going to honor Him because when we honor Him, He honors us. I'll see you next week at this same time on this same station. God bless you. Thanks for watching. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.